I'm going to call the license hearing and public safety committee meeting to order. Roll call, older person Barb Feldy, I am here. Betty, older person Betty Ackley, here. Older person Dean Decker, he, uh, he is excused. Um, older person Joe Heideman, here. Older person Amanda Salazar, and she has not contacted me. She had said she wasn't going to be here today. Oh, okay. I had written that down. Great. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes from July 27th, 2022. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Number six, resolution number 4822238122, a resolution establishing a rotational dispatch contract for emergency securement and board up after fire incidents. Uh, thank you, Chair. So um, when there's an incident in a business or a home uh, that the fire department responds, so let's say a structure fire, um, typically in the past what's happened is after it's been mitigated, fire's out, if we've had to cut a hole in the roof, break a window to uh, ventilate, uh, bust the door to get access, uh we really haven't done anything in the past other than you know let the homeowner or uh, business owner know and then we can clear the scene after it's all done uh so what this board up uh, program would be is there's several companies locally um or throughout the state but our, our um we wanted them to be here within 45 minutes uh of notification uh these board up slash restoration companies would come um and secure the property, board it up, use plywood, uh, secure the roof if they have access to some, if it's a safe uh, thing for them to do, and and then um, give the uh, key or you know put a padlock on that if the, the door was not uh, able to be secured because of our damage or whatever gaining access, they would put a padlock on a plywood piece, you know, put engines up, and then give the key to the owner. Uh, so they could still uh, get access to the building after we're gone, if it was safe to do so. Um, so we have a program that I, that I looked into uh, working with the attorney's office. Um, we've spoken to several departments here in the city. Uh, they're welcome to use it as well if they were interested. Uh, these board of companies would fill out an application uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, they'd have to meet certain criteria that the attorneys and, and I feel are important, like they have to be insured, bonded, um, they have to meet the criteria that the application uh, states. And then they'd be, if, if they meet all those criteria, they'd be placed on a call list. And uh, it, it would be a rotational call list that would be left with dispatch, basically a spreadsheet, if you will. And if the incident happened right now, if we call board up company number one or whatever's due on that list, uh, if they come out, and we had another incident uh, tomorrow, well then uh, the next board up company would be called. So it's kind of fair. Um, and uh, if they weren't able to come because they're already on another job somewhere else, then you just go to the next company in, in the board up rotation. So um, the list would be maintained at dispatch. And then um, if one of the criteria is that they don't show up to the scene unless they're called. I don't want what we, you know, like it's referred to as ambulance chasers. Well, we don't want fire chasers. We don't want them to show up unless they're called because there's enough going on. Um, if, if a company did, I have the ability to kick them off the list for the next year or for that the rest of the remainder of this year. And they had to reapply next year to be back on the list. Um, so I would, I'm seeking uh, approval to institute this program. And um, if you have any questions, um, I can certainly try to answer or attorney Adams is here for the legal aspect of it, but uh, yeah, I'm looking for support. I have one. Sure. So is this going to cost anything? Not a dime. 
so so it goes through it goes through the uh, insurance companies. Um, so if uh, heaven forbid something happened at your house, um, you would uh, you know we would go to you and say, Barb, would you like us to call or Mrs. Feldy, would you like us to call a board up company? We had to break two windows on the second floor. Um, and they could come up and secure it, or would you like to handle it yourself? So the option is yours. If you say, yeah, please, Chief, can you go ahead and uh, um, contact a board of company for you, for me? Then before we do, uh, we said, certainly we can. I, While we're calling them, I want you to call your insurance company to make sure that, uh, and I will tell you who's on, the, you know, who's coming out. Even if they come out and they don't do anything, nobody's on the hook for anything, you could still say, nope, my insurance company's not going to cover it. Um, but we don't know who's on the list until we call. <laughs> so when they come out, you can decide yeah, yes or no. Uh, I changed my mind. It's all good. No cost to the city. Um, if the city calls them, uh, let's say, heaven forbid, we, we bust down a door because we went to the wrong address. Okay. Um, and we would have to secure this door because it's not usable anymore. We can call the board up company to secure that door. And uh, we would pay for that because we are calling them for our thing that we did, not because it's an incident at a fire that we had to cut a hole. Make sense? Yep. Any other questions? Of course. So you mentioned uh, the insurance companies are on board with this. So because uh, you always see the commercial where next thing that something happens and the guy, the insurance guy is standing right next to him. Uh, I don't know if they're within 45 minutes, but uh, so do you have to, how do you establish that, that are the board of companies also working with the insurance companies so that if you had say State Farm, this board of company already works with State Farm, call them? So <clears throat> we would not know who works with who because right. I have the companies on the rotational list. Gotcha. So company two is due next, they get called. State Farm, uh, typically all the major insurance companies have worked with these companies. Um, however, there could be a chance that maybe they don't work there. Their insurance company, that insurance company won't cover this board up company. They, that's what I mean, the homeowner would know about it. That's why we would suggest to the our business owner okay. to contact their insurance company, make sure we have um, Monty's board up service coming. They'll be here in 30 minutes. Please make sure that your insurance company can work with them and will cover the cost of it because we don't want anything to go to the residents. We don't want the, or the home business owner right. um, to get pinched for any of the costs. Now, again, let's say the business owner ran a forklift through their plate glass window. And now they got to board this up there. They don't know who to call. They, we came out there because sprinkler pipes were busted and stuff like that. We could certainly assist and say, well, we could call a board up company for you. Um, they would come out and measure the window. They could put plywood up and secure it. You guys can handle it. It's up to you. Yeah, do you mind call? Sure, we'll call them and same thing. Call your insurance company, make sure you can deal with them. Yeah. So there, you don't know of any cases where you've had the board up company come in and then the insurance company said, what, to the property owner, why'd you call them? I yeah. can take care of it. Uh, there, there has been, you get weasel companies every now and then, but that's why we have the application process. They, that, that's why I mean, when they chase the fires, they hear it on the standard, they show up. We won't use those companies. Um, in my history for 30 years of doing it, we've had board ups, you know, come out and really never had an issue with them. I mean, could there happen? Sure. But it's a pro right now we have nothing. And we don't board up anything and people, their homes are exposed and businesses are exposed. So I, I'm just trying to look out for the, the owners and occupants to at least give them in, some in, time. In this last weather thing where we had all the trees go down, mm -hmm. and there was homes damaged. Mm -hmm. Would it have been a case where we would have called people in for that? Uh, sure, if they would have, if we would have responded for that tree. Now again, it, it, when trees are on the roofs, we don't remove trees. Right. Uh, but yes, we certainly could. I, I when uh, we went to the meeting after with Director Beeble and the administrator and all that, we talked about what we could do. Certainly, this would be a case where if Public Works was removing a couple of trees, I think they said they removed six. Were you at that meeting, Chief? No, I think it was six to eight or something like that. They removed trees off of houses um, because they were city trees. We certainly could have done then. Yeah, 
call and call board up company as long as we're there to assist yeah. or public works could go through dispatch perfect yeah good question any other okay need a motion second all in favor say aye 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 chair votes aye yes thank you for your support Okay, number seven, general ordinance number 822-23-8122 and ordinance expanding the disorderly conduct ordinance so as to prohibit harassment of an individual on the basis of their status as an elect election official and requiring an increased forfeiture for violations of this nature and clarifying that disorderly conduct may include harassment by the use of telecommunication devices. Is that you? I can talk about it. Oh, yeah. okay. So this, this came from the mayor's office uh, as a request and uh, we have talked to uh, the clerk's office as well and they're uh, in support of it. Uh, realistically, it, uh, you know, I, I said in there, um, prohibit harassment on the basis of their status as an election official. I mean, already disorderly conduct is disorderly conduct. So it really doesn't add any new form of disorderly conduct in that regard, based on the fact that somebody's an election official, but it does increase the penalty in that circumstance as a way to sort of um, hopefully prevent it. Um, it does also clarify, right now our disorderly conduct ordinance is fairly bare bones. Um, I don't think we would have any issue uh, proving that you can be disorderly even by a telecommunication device. And we do have some other ordinances that can deal with that, but this makes it clear that disorderly conduct can happen by phone, by text as well, as long as they meet all the other guidelines of disorderly conduct uh, tending to cause a uh, disturbance. Um, the, the ordinance is basically patterned after Madison's ordinance, which uh, passed their common council, I think, earlier this week. Um, so that's that's what's there and it's up to you if you want to approve that. Um, it's an increased forfeiture for violations of right. it, this nature. Um, is, it does it depend upon how much the or what the what the harassment was to well, how much the, the, the forfeiture is? So what it does is it takes the normal forfeiture, um, which is uh, 75 to $500 and increases it to uh, 300 to $1,000 if it involves a, an election official. Um, so, and then what the bond amount does is it, 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 so the bond amount is the amount that the officers write on there. They don't get to choose within the range, only the judge gets to choose that. The bond amount will go from, uh, 250 including cost to 376 including costs any other questions no i was going to ask about how it went up so <laughs> oh sorry not six, that i'm six, planning six, on doing it but. 691 376 is the aggravated one uh in normal cases 691 is the amount if it's an election official i have one other question so is this something that's going across a lot of the cities that they're doing this because of uh, you know what's happened in the last elections or whatever i don't know what's happening in other communities i suspect it's going around where i think we're the second one to pass it if we pass it but um i suspect it's going around it, does this have any chief does this have any bearing on your office as far as what you're going to do as far as the, um, uh, how you investigate those things sure is that a good thing or a bad thing then that's any point of view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a for your office. Minimal impact, I would say. Questions? Any other? All right, I need a motion then. Move to approve. Second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay. Number eight, beverage operator's license, it's renew, application number 7570, Juan D. Coronado, 
hearing regarding non-renewal of license. Is Juan here? He is not. Um, we did not really expect him here. Uh, we had called him in because he does have some new uh, charges against him, uh, and he had already had some. Uh, he had already been issued the license in the past. Uh, he did not appear, so he didn't uh, cooperate with us, and he didn't appear today. So on that basis, you can deny uh, simply based on the recommendation of the uh, uh, the staff group that reviews these. Uh, we kind of didn't expect he was going to be here. He's got outstanding warrants, and if he'd been here, she would have arrested him. I think you had mentioned that at our last meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't expecting to see him. Okay, motion. I make a motion to deny based on staff Are recommendations. Yeah, I'll second. I, I just had one, one question. Where was he? Where was he licensed to serve? Well, the license in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, okay, so well, it wasn't like he was working at a mini market. Yeah, we we don't know where where he was working particularly, but it doesn't matter because the license allows you to do any kind of survey. It's not. We okay. can't limit it to only mini marts. Or gotcha. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We have a we have a motion and a second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion cast passes. RO number forty two twenty two twenty three seven eighteen twenty two by city clerk submitting various license applications, class B beer, license application number 3519, PETA's Mexican store, LLC. We had held this one just because uh, they, they had a drive-through and there was some question about whether that was gonna be appropriate. Turns out they didn't wanna serve alcohol through their drive-through, so they just changed their application to not include the drive-through area as part of their premises, simple solution and recommending granting questions make a motion friend okay second all in favor say aye aye, aye. chair votes aye motion carried ro number 51 22 23 81 22 by city clerk submitting various license applications these are uh, a couple of um change of premises, uh, temporary change of premises for events, and we're recommending granting uh, uh, applications. I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve based on staff recommendations. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Update regarding alcohol beverage license number 2301. One more time, LLC. I had to do it that way. <laughs> Mojo, discussion only. So, just I wanted to just bring you up to date. Uh, I'm not going to go into all sorts of strategy about the lawsuit or anything because we'd want to do that in closed session, but just sort of bring you up to date on what's happened. So, after uh, your committee decided not to grant him one of the remaining licenses, uh, uh, Mr. Benelli did file suit uh, in circuit court. Uh, uh, it's, it's called Petition for Writ of Certiorari, uh, basically asking the uh, court to review the decision that you made and ask that the license be granted by the circuit court. Um, for that reason, I'm going to suggest that we not hold any more uh, you know, times where people can come in and give presentations uh, because of the court were to decide to grant the license. And at this point we had, you know, we decide to give it away. Uh, I don't think that wouldn't work very well. I think the, the court would have a problem with that. It might've been different had before he filed the lawsuit, we had granted the license, but, but we didn't. Um, and so uh, we're not gonna hold presentations for now. We're gonna let that license. Um, certainly you can, at some not today because it's for discussion only but if at some point you want to put on the agenda a discussion whether to grant him the license you can do that um, but for now that's really up to you and we can't do it today questions uh, i have one um so are we gonna fight in court about this or um is the city gonna say okay come back and 
Right in court, what will happen? So what a writ of certiorari does is the court basically reviews your decision um, based solely on the record um, of your decision. So uh, in a normal, in, a, in the old days, what we would do is we would type out the transcript of the hearing, give it to the judge. The judge would review it and decide if he uh, disagreed with your decision. Um, there's, there's sort of a standard, you know, he can't just substitute his own choice for yours. He has to say that you did something wrong. Um, and then in that case, if he decides you did something wrong, he could, he would then rule that it should be given. We could appeal potentially, but, um, it's, it would not necessarily be my intention to do that unless you told me otherwise. Um, the, in, in this case, I, we're going to just ask the judge to watch the video. So much easier to watch a video than right. transcribe. Then transcribe all of the minutes. And most of the judges prefer that way. Uh, there was one judge who we did that for a couple times, and he decided he liked old-fashioned transcripts. But he recently retired, so I suspect um, this is going in branch two. I've never asked this question of Judge Hoffman, so I, I don't know. I suspect he'll want to watch the video, but that's up to him. If you're looking at a time frame, are we talking this is going to be over the next two or three months? Yeah, it'll take some time. Yeah, it's 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 going to stick out. It's going to hang out there for a little while. They're so far behind in circuit court, and this is not going to be a priority. Right. So they'll do it when it, when they feel like it. I I've got just as an example, um, you know, there, there's been a number of documents on the police and fire commission issue. Uh, uh, with uh, Pat and Gillette that happened, I don't know, that's probably been five, six months already, and it's just hanging out. Nothing has happened because the same judge has actually got the matter and he's just too busy to deal with stuff like that. They got to deal with their criminal stuff first. So it could be a long time. But but in the case of this business, wouldn't he try to make every attempt to expedite it so he could open up his business? I'm sure he would want to, but I mean, the he's basically got two options. One is to ask this of the judge and the other is to keep coming back to you. Um, it's, I guess he's decided that he'd rather go to the judge than come back to you. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I there's mean, always the possibility. Yeah, I, I mean, there's always the possibility of holding the presentations. The problem is, is if we hold the presentations and you decide not, and, and he comes and presents and so does somebody else, and you decide not to present to him, I'm going to tell you don't issue that license. Right. And so that's kind of, unless you guys have, you know, decide that actually it was a close call, you know, and now you want to grant it to them. You know, we could do that at some point, but I think that would take a couple of you calling me and telling me to do that, probably at least two of you. <laughs> so we can't grant any other licenses to anybody else until this is over? Until this is over, until others become available. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's just a renewal, so not like he gave up his license or he's getting a new one if we just want to you just right. want to renew he, he he wants it to be renewed but it won't be any good until he gets a court to decide it or you know if if he had if he could have kept just kept presenting in front of you and you know we probably had this not happened we would have held presentations to, that was four weeks ago right that we last had him in or was it two weeks ago no, not two weeks ago. So we probably would have held presentations today had it not been for this. Yeah. Um, and he could have just done that too, but he needed to. There is also some time frames for filing. So that's probably, he waited one one time to see if you give it to him and he didn't, so. So when somebody comes to ask for the, the this committee is gonna grant any licenses, you tell them at this time, no, we're not, not doing not available. it. Not available. Yeah. Has there been people coming? There's a list, there's always a list. Um, that you know, obviously, the hotel is the right. main one, but there are other people who are on the list. It's just they haven't, they don't always bother to show. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of the people who are on the list are businesses that are kind of, if they know there's something available, they're trying to scramble to get a premises to apply for. You know, because uh -huh. they know they're not going to get it from you guys if you, if they just come in and say, "Hey, I'm looking for a place," you know? <laughs> right? Exactly. I got this idea. Yeah. Well, I think he's holding because then whoever he sells the bar to, the 
wouldn't that license carry over to a new owner if he wanted? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if he decides to sell the bar, um, it's it's not that it automatically goes over because we did, the, you know, at back in um, June, we did deny a license to a new, uh, for somebody who wanted to get the original license, but um, so you still have to approve it, but it's not the same process where everybody gets to apply. It's there in those kind of situations, they're releasing contingent. Now he doesn't, he can't do that right now. So he also cannot sell the business or if he were to sell the business, I would argue, okay. first of all, that his lawsuit's moot and should be dismissed and, and, and he wouldn't have a license for them to apply for, right? Because it's, at this point, your decision still holds. Thank right. you for the clarification. Sure. This was discussion only, so we yep. don't need to do anything with it. Um, next meeting date will be August 24th, 2022. That's my anniversary. I may be out of town. Sure hope somebody remembers. <laughs> He's better at it than I am. <laughs> it's been recorded. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. aye. <laughs>